So are you in the market for a new sewing machine and are taking a look at the Juki TL2010Q? So I frequently get asked about the sewing machine that I use to make some of these goodies that you see right behind me. In today's video, I want to share with you a full review of the Juki TL2010Q. The whole purpose of this video is to enable you who are in the market for a new sewing machine and are interested in the TL2010Q and would like to find out more about it. Now, obviously, there are a lot of resources out there um, and a lot of great information about this machine. I just wanted to give you my feedback after having owned the machine for a year and a half. I felt that I'd had plenty of time to do a lot of different types of projects on it so that I could be able to give you a good review and evaluation of this machine. Sharing with you the pros and cons as well as who I think that this machine will be great for and some of you out there who it would not be great. So I was looking for something that could handle vinyl, leather, and cork fabric. So I wanted a strong motor. I wanted something that would display stitches that were consistent. So before I go any further, I just want to let you know what the price of this machine was. I purchased it off Amazon for $999 a year and a half ago and it's the same price that it was back then. So it is more of an investment for sure, but there are a lot more expensive machines than this one as well. So, and there are a lot less expensive industrial machines that you can um, choose from. So it all depends what types of projects that you'll be sewing and what types of fabrics that you'll be using. Let's get into it and let me show you what I received in the mail from Amazon, how it came, and my reason behind this so that you know exactly what to expect if you order this machine. Okay, so the machine came from Amazon in this box. Okay, let me show you the approximate size so you know what to expect. It's about 25 and a half inches in length and the depth of the box is about 14 inches and height is 18 inches. So it is a mid-arm quilting machine and piecing machine. So it came with an extension table and knee lift, plenty of room for working on your quilts. The back of the machine has little legs on them. The neat feature about this is that you can adjust the table if it's not sitting exactly level with your sewing machine. You can adjust the feet. And then for storing, you can just flip them back down. It also has a spot for you to be able to store the knee lift lever. I do keep my knee lift lever on the machine. I know a lot of people don't, but I enjoy it and it clicks in right there. Okay, so the machine comes with a foot controller. So these are the five feet that the machine comes with. With a walking foot, with a zipper foot, so the free motion foot. And then it comes with a foot on the machine and this is the foot that I use the most because it's narrow so I actually use this most of the time I don't even need to switch to the zipper foot just so that you can kind of see the narrowness of it is great and how it compares to the zipper foot and it also comes with a quarter inch quilting foot and you can purchase additional feet. One extra foot that I find useful is this Teflon foot. I did order it. The machine also comes with this exclusive screwdriver, which is really handy to take off the screws on the throat plate. Okay, so the machine comes with this nice black screwdriver, little flathead screwdriver. Comes with a little cleaning brush with four bobbins. And then there's a little oiling bottle that a pack of needles. Comes with a large spool cap. Comes with a soft sewing machine cover. 
And it has an opening for you to be able to carry the machine and move it around. Okay, and it comes with a standard power cord. The throat space is eight and a half by six inches. Semi-industrial straight stitch, automatic thread trimmer, automatic needle threader, speed control adjustment lever, drop feed dogs, pressure foot, pressure adjustment, a bright LED light, and then finally a needle up, down button. Okay, so taking a look at the side of the machine, first of all, machine from the back side, a venting compartment for the motor. And this is made out of plastic, but the rest of the machine is for the most part metal. Now I will link a video up and in the top right hand corner with a technician that actually works on these Juki machines and he goes in and opens up the machine and shows you that I think it's 95 or greater percentage of this machine is made out of metal. Now there are components that are made out of plastic and he does explain why that is and the reasoning behind that. Okay, so starting off with the top of the machine, you have two vertical thread spool holders, regular cotton thread, as well as the large cone-shaped spools. There's a telescoping arm. Okay, and then this is the bobbin winding apparatus for threading the bobbin. So I just put it through the hole and then put it between the little tension discs. And then there is a hole for you to put the thread through. It automatically stops. Okay, so I wanted to show you a couple of other parts to this machine, but first I'm gonna have to push down the telescoping thread arm. You can lift up the machine and lay it on its back. So this little door gives you access to underneath the machine so that you are able to clean out all of the little dust. It just pops back in there. Okay, so I wanted to show you how easily this knee lever is, pops on. You just press it in to that hole. Then you can easily use the motion of your knee to lift up the presser foot so that you can have complete control of your fabric. If you're doing free motion quilting, it's a huge advantage. Let's get this machine set up with a bobbin case. Insert the bobbin and kind of insert it into the side of the machine. You want to make sure that the tension desks are, the presser foot's up. I'll show you how quickly it goes. Let's take a look at the stitch quality. So that is the front of the fabric and the back. So next I'm going to do a six millimeter basting stitch so you can see what that looks like. It's the three millimeter is on the top. Okay, so another cool feature of this machine is to use your heel to cut the thread. So you don't have to rely on this one. You can keep your hands on your work. Okay, so next I'm going to attach the free motion foot. Okay, I'm gonna drop the feed dogs. I am not proficient in this. By any means. <laughs> So changing out the feet is a breeze. You just unscrew. Okay, so let's take a look at some different materials and see how the machine performs with different fabrics. All right, got my safety glasses. Safety first, <laughs> just in case a needle breaks. All right, so this is three layers of denim. Two, 
three. Okay, I'm gonna add two more layers for a total of five. So I increased the pressure foot tension just because I was getting a stitch that was longer, but once I adjusted that, it's looking good. Go up to seven. Now, how often do you guys, are you guys gonna sew something quite that thick? But I just wanna show it to you. Okay, that went really well once I added even more pressure. 11, let me make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, so that's 11 layers of denim, which almost hard to get under the machine. So I'm gonna back out and go slowly. I'm gonna also lengthen the stitch length some more, add a little more pressure. Okay, well that's pretty darn good. And the back is looking good. So three layers of felt, and this probably should not be a big deal for the machine, but we'll see. Beautiful, Let's see if we can double this up. One, two, three, four, five, six layers of felt. The stitches were flawless. It's pretty good. All right, I'm just gonna double it up to simulate six layers of waterproof canvas. One, two, three, four, five, six of the waterproof canvas. The cork, I'm gonna switch to a Teflon foot, which helps with that kind of material and also it will help go through the vinyl. Okay, so I've added on the Teflon foot and here we go with a cork. So that was two layers of cork. So it simulate a seam, really. You can double it up and see if it'll do four layers. I've never tried this, so. Oh, it's got this. <laughs> so that's three, four layers of cork. Okay, onto the vinyl. Beautiful with a vinyl. Okay, that was four layers. And uh, there was one stitch that was longer. So I'm gonna add some more of the pressure to that foot. It was four layers of vinyl. 
and there were a couple of longer stitches but then I adjusted the pressure on the foot and it was flawless. Okay guys, I survived. My eyeballs are still intact and I've shown you all the different fabrics that this machine sews through, some of the features. The surprise bonuses that I found in this machine were the ability to really be hands-free. In other words, I didn't have to take my hands off the work to cut the thread. The ability to cut with the foot pedal as well as lifting the presser foot up and down with the knee uh, lever. The table that came with it was nice and big. It has a really nice long basting stitch. What I loved about this machine, and there are so many features that I really loved in this machine, and I think that is why it is so popular for so many sewing enthusiasts. One, it is reliable stitch quality and performance. It is truly as close to an industrial machine as you can get with the power that it has as well as the ability that it can tolerate really thick fabrics. So some of the cons, I mean obviously there are cons, pros and cons to any machine. The bobbin, it is a bobbin more similar to the industrial machine so you can't really see how much thread is left versus like say a machine that has a drop-in bobbin where you can actually see how close you're getting towards the end of the thread. Probably one of the bigger issues that I've had with a machine is just the threading. I would like to see this machine would be like oh, <laughs> perfection if the automatic threader wasn't so finicky and that could be user error. And I know that a lot of people do have issues with that, but um, I have knocked it out of alignment, but I was able to order a part um, easily and inexpensively and replace it. And I do have a video on that in case you're experiencing the same thing. Going back to one of the cons, I forgot. It doesn't have a free arm. You kind of have to squish your project down and, and get it in and sew around that way. Now, who I would recommend this machine to is anybody that is wanting to sew with thicker fabrics, bag makers. Who I wouldn't recommend it to is somebody that's gonna do predominantly clothing and apparel. Again, if you have the luxury of having both a machine such as this one for the thicker projects and then something else for apparel. That's the best of both worlds. I hope that this review was useful to you. I hope that you found a lot of information if you're seeking to purchase the Juki and hopefully it will help you make a more of an informed decision. If you enjoyed and found the information in this video of value, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, click subscribe and turn on the notifications bell for new material as I crank out new videos. As usual, happy sewing. Bye for now.